So I got the new ATC SCM 25As in today, and I am super pumped. I've had these Mackey HR 824s for probably oh, 16 years now. I've used them in three different rooms, and I know these guys inside and out, but uh, I had a listen of these, along with a bunch of other monitors, and all kinds of different price points. And uh, these stood out in the crowd. And I was just like, what are those? So uh, here we go. I'm gonna unbox these things. Well, first of all, they're super heavy. So heavy. But uh, we'll take them out. All right, so here we go. We're gonna open up the first box here. And I got it cut up in here. Looks like we got some instructions on how to carefully take out the heaviest speakers known to man here. Uh, we got... Uh, it looks like we gotta turn the sucker upside down, lift the box, all that good stuff. Let's see what they're telling us not to do. Uh, it should be carried out by two people. Guess I need to get somebody over here then. Huh? Remove all jewelry, and including rings and watches to ensure you not scratch any surfaces. So I guess goodbye to all that. Um, yeah, let's don't do that. That would be bad. All right, well, let me go find somebody else to help me out here. All right, so I got a little impatient. Didn't want to find anybody else. I supermanned it. Got them both uh, upside down here. And here's the first one that is out of the box. Comes in a nice little felt type of uh, little bag situation here. We got power cable, packed in super nice. Get rid of all the, the gack here. We got this red string situation. And untie the bag. Let's see what we got here. I don't need two hands for this. All right, got one of them out of the protective holding. It's coming in with this, uh, this little self adhesive tape to protect the front here. Everything's looking good. Just gotta get the second speaker out now. All right, got both speakers out, ready to go. Got a little bit of case candy, with all the, the essentials, I guess, serial numbers and all that. All right, let's mount them up. All right, got the ATCs all mounted up. And we're about to take off this shiny new plastic here. I think there's a whole series on YouTube of people peeling off plastic and everybody getting super excited about it. Oh yeah. Hey, hey, we gotta be gentle over here, remember? Gotta be careful. You going to the pedals? All right. Yeah? Which one's your favorite? That one? You like the Strymon? Dig, that's your favorite. Okay, good. Well, got the shiny new plastic off of them, looking good. And uh, right off the bat, I can already tell it's gonna be a little odd for me not having speakers in a vertical position. I've been listening for 11 years in this room, in particular to my old Mackies. And uh, this is gonna be interesting, so about to fire it up. All right, so I'm about to do a first listen on these and I'm gonna pull up a recent uh, song that I've produced, mixed and mastered. I think I know that song inside and out, so I'm gonna let my ears rest on it and see what happens here. All right, just had a first listen on these guys. And <laughs> first of all, just the sound sage of everything is absolutely huge. I mean, and clear. Um, I'm pulling up mixes that I've done and thankfully I'm very happy with the work that I've done on the Mackies and they just sound incredible on the, the ATCs. And um, it's not really in a flattering way, it's just showing it in a, a true way and the best way I can describe it is it's sounding the way it's always sounded in my head and um, man it's crazy it's like you're in it anyway um, it's probably gonna take a little bit for me to get used to uh, the, just the center is so strong and focused um, I'm very interested in seeing how uh, starting fresh on a mix and even starting fresh on a production um, affects a lot of the decisions that I make but anyway, hope you enjoyed the uh, unboxing of, of these guys right here. And um, I'm sure I'll be uh, talking about them a little bit more pretty soon. See ya. 
All right, so it's 5 a.m. Uh, I've been in here since 4.30 a.m. Couldn't sleep, woke up about 3.30. And um, I don't know, I'm excited about these uh, ATCs and I'm trying to figure them out a little bit. They're definitely a lot different from my Mackie HR824s. And I know that I'm gonna have a little bit of a learning curve and I've got a lot of mixing coming up and I'm just trying to wrap my ears around um, just the the sound and the presentation and how they're feeling in my room too because um, yesterday we we're cutting some vocals and that was a lot of fun because I could really hear a lot of the mid-range detail going on and uh, that definitely made tracking a lot more fun and a little easier too. I uh, didn't really have to strain to hear any of the, uh, the really details of uh, the vocals. Uh, but with mixing, uh, I just decided to come in here this morning and Listen to uh, Dua Lipa's song Cool, which is an amazing mix. And um, I've been kind of messing around with one of the settings. There's really not any settings to do on uh, these 25As. But on the back here, there is a um, bass boost right here. I'm not sure if that'll focus in. And uh, you can add three decibels uh, down at 40 hertz. And the thing about that is, um, according to the manual, is uh, adds more warmth, warmth and energy at lower frequencies. And the music at the expense of accurate transient reproduction. And I have found that to be true. So um, let me kind of focus that back in here. What I kind of noticed is when it's all the way at zero, it the transient detail is super crisp and I wanted to get a little bit more of that low end uh, that I feel like I was kind of missing coming from the Mackies. So I experimented going back and forth between three decibels uh, of boost and that felt like a little too much. I felt like the transient detail was getting a little bit um, lost and then um, kind of settled in on a halfway point. Uh, I felt like a really good balance, at least for my room. And it get, it's getting me a little bit closer into uh, what I'm familiar with and that's the that's the key for me right now that way I can keep working and uh, get used to these things hopefully uh, they, they sound amazing especially on this song when that chorus drops man it's just you see everything uh, really presented well with these speakers so uh, that's a little early morning update for you on uh, day three with the uh, ATCs all right, so we're at day 10 with the ATCs in here, and I've been able to track a few songs on them, which has been a lot of fun, and I don't feel like I'm doing anything, like, drastically different on them. Like, it's not life-changing of, oh, man, I gotta, like, brighten this guitar up whenever I'm playing uh, for tracking. Uh, doing pretty similar moves than as compared to what I was doing on the Mackies, although um, doing vocals and vocal comps, you can just really hear the details of the mid-range, and that's been super cool. Uh, as far as mixing, I've done, I think, four songs now. I'm printing one down right now. And um, the first song turned out absolutely killer. Uh, it was a little bit more of a pop-driven country song. And my first pass, I almost nailed it, except I was a little bit bass shy on the bass guitar, so had to bump that up just a little bit. But it came back from mastering, and it is slamming. And... That'll be out uh, later in June uh, with an artist named Alicia Eichel. Uh, but the other three were a little bit more on the acoustic side. And what I mean by acoustic is real drums, real instruments. And I f have found that the ATCs are making me work a little bit harder to get to where I want to be, uh, which is not a bad thing. I feel like the Mackies were definitely a, a more, a little bit more of a fun speaker, I guess. You could kind of crank them and... Uh, but the ATCs are so revealing in the mid-range that they just kind of make you, I don't know, they just keep telling you to fix stuff until it's done. And that's what you want. I uh, guess some things about them, I've kind of noticed that these suckers run hot. Um, Temperature-wise, I mean, they're putting off some heat, probably more than my mix bus over here. And they are definitely a louder speaker. So like with the Mackies, uh, I kind of had a sweet spot of like, a couple of different things with uh, mixing. I knew that if I was around 
um, like 67 on the readout that I was doing pretty good. And then when I was mastering, if I was at, you know, monitoring at 62, not necessarily the decibel readout, but that number right there, if I was at 62 and I knew that I was going to be um, in commercial loudness territory, uh, but with these, uh, I'm still kind of getting my, my ears wrapped around, you know, where that kind of falls as far as being consistent. Um, getting close on it, but I've noticed that these are definitely about five to six decibels louder. So when I switch to that little Avatone, uh, yeah, Avatone speaker, um, I actually have to crank that guy up just to get a decent level out of it, which is kind of annoying. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep him up there or not. Um, but that's a general thought on that. What else? Yeah, I'm finding that the bass boost on the back, um, I'm kind of liking that either at the halfway point with a 1.5 dB boost or somewhere in between with like a 0.75. I've kind of noticed that if I mix completely flat, the transient detail is um, so crisp that it's making me um, not want to go push as bright, which I like to kind of, you know, make things a little bit more on the shiny side. So uh, I found that kind of rolling that bass boost up just a little bit gives me more of that low end detail, um, kind of smooths out the transit just a little bit. That way I can kind of push myself on the high end and, um, and it still translates great. Uh, and that kind of gets me more into what I'm familiar with on the Mackies, but uh, those are some, some thoughts. I'm sure there will be more, stay tuned. And there are more thoughts. So I kind of forgot to talk about this. Um, I've decided that when I do a mix, I'm going to bring in like three to four different ref tracks, reference tracks, <laughs> trying to be cool, say ref, whatever. And um, two of the three, that's going to be more of like a commercial um, reference. That way I can kind of flip back and forth, make sure that I'm in the ballpark of what I need to be sonically. Uh, but I'm also bringing in like a past mix from an artist. If it's the same artist or a similar thing that I've done, I'll bring that in and then AB uh, the mix that I'm working on just to make sure that I'm beating what I've been doing. Um, or I don't know, I, I guess it's kind of a mind game. You know, I guess if I had the Mackies up and I was referencing that, flipping back and forth, I could beat that too. Um, I don't know. I've kind of found that that's helped just a little bit, um, especially on like the pop stuff. But anyway, little tip. So I've had the Mackies sitting on the floor over here and they seemed a little, uh, little lonely. I've been using them forever and felt kind of bad for them. So I put them on top of the ATCs just so I could uh, flip back and forth and see what the difference is. And let me play a track that I produced recently for the walk-ons called I'm Here For It. And let me start off with the ATCs. Yes, sir. It's just an old smoky couch in the basement, a couple cute faces haven't got a name yet. So the first thing that I'm hearing is there's definitely more low end from the Mackies. And I actually mixed this song on the Mackies and I've been using the ATCs for about 10 days now. And my ears are definitely more in tune with the ATCs. So flipping back and forth, I, I definitely noticed more low end on the Mackies. And also notice that the mids are scooped or just a little on the blurry side. And then uh, the ATCs come in and it's just like super focused on the mids. Um, I do miss a little bit of that bass, but uh, from the Mackies, but I mean, everything's translating pretty well. I guess it's just all what you get used to when your ears kind of, you know, get wrapped around everything. Uh, but let me play this chorus again. I'll start with the Mackies and then I'll flip on, uh, yeah, let me start, on, start right here in probably this verse. I'll start with the uh, ATCs first and then I'll flip to the Mackies back and forth. Ooh. 
ATCs, I'm hearing more of my reverb effects uh, that I've had in place for a lot of the things, especially some vocal stuff and the snare drum. And it's just so much more clear and clean. Um, I do miss a little bit of the low end from the Mackies, but you know, it's all about what you get used to. And I feel like with the Mackies, my ears kind of got adjusted to that to where I could kind of get it dialed in for the car. Um, I'm feeling pretty good, but you know, this mix was done with the Mackies and I think it sounds pretty dang good on these ATCs. So I don't know, pretty crazy. I, I'm, I'm most impressed with the mid range on the ATC. I mean, I think that's where it really shines and especially the high end, because I mean, you can just really see into the mix. You can see the, the reverbs and you're not hearing the speaker. I feel like you're just hearing the music, uh, as with the, with the Mackies, you're, you're you're kind of fighting some stuff along the way, but your ears get used to it and you just kind of work through it. Um, but because that mid range is a little bit on the, the scoop side, it kind of forces you to try to make that pop on the Mackies. But um, so far so good with the ATCs and just having that magnifying glass on the mid range. But uh, who knows if this actually translates through an iPhone speaker for you, but I'm sure you could hear just a little bit of a difference. All right, so day 23 with the ATCs, and uh, I've got the Mackies up top, and I'm probably gonna take those down pretty soon. I brought, I put those up just because I felt like I wasn't feeling the low end like I, sh I wanted to. The low end is just a different thing on the ATCs, and I was kind of sweating it for a few days um, after doing some mixes on them, and the, even though the mixes sounded great, um, they don't really give you that, that chest thumping low end. It's a more tight, um, clean low end. And it's just a different thing that I'm going to have to get my ears, you know, readjusted to. But um, I think I've kind of found the solution. So um, I've got Sonarworks and I never really liked the Sonarworks software with the Mackies and I still don't know how people mix 100% on it. I mean, it's just, it's so bright. It's kind of weird. Um, but so I gave it another chance, and even with the Mackies, I've kind of found that the results weren't like super consistent. Um, it took multiple times to kind of find where the sweet spot was. And uh, with the ATCs, I went ahead and did the uh, calibration and the you know the crazy spaceship sound and sounds and all that kind of stuff. By the way, if you get sonar works, make sure you have earplugs in when you do that because that stuff is loud. Uh, the first time that I did it, I'm like, crap, I should have worn earplugs. But anyway, uh, did that whole thing with the sonar works thing. And I've kind of discovered that to give me that little extra um, low end that I need. And this, this wouldn't be for the entire mix either. So basically, the way I'm doing it now is I'm mixing through the ATCs normal. And I'm just doing my thing. Then I do, um, when I get to the end of my mixing with those... And I'll check on the, the Avon tone a little bit here and there too, but um, I'll move over to my Sennheiser HD 280 Pro headphones. Kind of do more tweaking with that if there's any like 
vocal uh, resonant frequencies or um, any type of low end kind of thing that I can tighten up a little on that. And then um, I think the next step for me will be to turn on the sonar works at 30%. I've kind of found that if I do that, then it brings up that low end enough to where it's clear and I can make a, a little bit better informed decision. <clears throat> if I did the entire 100%, uh, I would be hating life. <laughs> it's, it's just not natural sounding to my ears at least. But 30% gives me just that extra like little magnifying glass that I feel like I need before I take it out to the car. And um, I've kind of found that that kind of, uh, you know, simulates what I would have in the car with the low end. And I know all cars are different, but you know, you're always, you know, used to what you're, uh, what you're used to. But anyway, that's where we're at on day 23. Almost thought I was going to pack them up. I don't want to, man. The, the, the mid range is so sweet. Uh, I've kind of noticed consistently that my mixes, uh, don't feel as scooped and, and really one of my main goals was to get a little bit more mid-range definition uh, that would translate to like earbuds and small speakers and um, I, I definitely feel like these help me in that direction and uh, they're a lot of fun to to produce on to and produce tracks on um, but yeah I'll, uh, I'll wrap all this up tidy on a day 30 Probably uh, had the Mackies gone at that point, but still here. They'll always be here. I still like them. I like to crank them. They're good. Well, it's day 30 with the ATCs, and uh, it's been a journey. I wanted to give myself uh, an honest and fair shot with them. I know that there was going to be some times where I was going to be ready to pack them up and take advantage of the uh, return policy, but obviously they're here, and uh, I'm going to keep them. Uh, the mid-range is just so sweet on it and there was a there's still a little bit of a learning curve i'm still getting to know them um but i'm, I'm super close on it and it, it's been interesting not only just with mixing but also recording and producing um because i'm playing all the instruments on most of the stuff that i do uh, i like to kind of mix as i go uh, not fully but just enough to create the vibe for the track and um, let it inspire me for more ideas as i'm building along with the song um, but they, they do make you work a little bit harder, but you're able to pinpoint things uh, pretty quickly because uh, I like to move fast and um, these have kind of helped me with that. And also uh, producing vocals. I mean, the, the mid range is so clear that you just hear everything and especially at a low volume. Um, so that's been pretty cool too. Uh, some things that some people kind of say online about them that they're shy on low end. Um, Maybe a little bit, but I think it's just a different bass presentation because with the Mackies, you can, you know, as you're mixing, you can really push like a kick drum to make it like kind of hit your chest. And that's when you know that it's feeling pretty good and can translate. Uh, but the low end on these is just so clear uh, and tight and, and it's not punchy in like a hitching the chest kind of way. It's, it's just a different thing. Just got to learn them a little bit more. Um, but I'm starting to dial it in, starting to feel pretty good about them and, um, things are translating really well on earbuds. That's been, uh, that's been something that I've been wanting to do. I know that's kind of crazy to want to improve on, but I've kind of found that I'm getting more mid range forwardness, but not in, not in a, um, piercing or shrill kind of way. Um, that's been it has been really cool. Uh, I've enjoyed that. Um, still a few things I'm kind of ironing out, but it's feeling good. Uh, another thing, though, about them that I've been kind of surprised about is they've kind of inspired me to maybe want to go back to 100% in the box on mixing. Because right now I'm, I'm doing a hybrid setup, and this is my mix bus. And I'm doing more, you know, mix bus stuff um, in there on plugins too, but... Um, I don't know, there's something about them that's making me consider maybe going back 100% in the box. I don't know. The only thing that's really kind of keeping me back is 
the uh, master bus processor because this thing just autom it automatically adds a lot of weight and character in the um, this little SFE section over here. Um, it really adds some nice width and depth and you just feel the music more. And that was the main reason why I decided to go hybrid a few years ago. Just so, I don't know, I just felt the music a little bit more. But I don't know, something about the, the ATCs. Um, I'm kind of inspired to try to go down that path and just kind of see what happens. But anyway, that's the full 30 day cycle uh, and journey with my ATCs. I hope that you've enjoyed um, these long rambling random videos. Um, there's only a couple of videos out there uh, talking about these monitors and I kind of wish that there was more out there. So hopefully this kind of helps somebody, you know, if you're th t thinking about taking the dive of changing monitors and going through all that, um, <laughs> this might make you think twice, but maybe it inspires you. I don't know. Hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep on rocking with them.